Hi, hope you're well. In this one, I'm sharing some first impressions of this, the CSC SIS 50. Ooh, that's the new cordless sustainer table saw for a Festool. I think the Festool have made a big mistake by not making mains power available on this saw. We'll get into the details of all that a little bit later. And I've gone into the details of why I thought this saw ticked the boxes for me in a previous video. I'll link that up down below. But the long and the short of it is that I wanted a small, quiet, accurate table saw with good dust collection after I pushed myself to the edge of madness making a Mondrian style table using just a track saw and a miter saw. I'm going to remake a small section of that table now using this saw and I'll fill you in on some more details as I get this done. So January the 26th this year I pre-ordered the saw and the duo battery pack and paid for it in full expecting delivery to be in a few weeks time. Four months later, with nobody able to give me a firm information on availability, I did what a normal person would do. I cancelled that pre-order and I bought the saw Bear from Amazon. We're just going to pause for a minute to reflect on how your entire dealer network can be starved of stock of your hot new product when it's actually available through Amazon. Yeah, and then we'll move on. My saw arrived a few days later and was registered with Festool UK for the extended warranty without any issues. It actually arrived on the day I was moving house, pending some building works, more on that in future videos. So I've only had the saw commissioned for about a week, perfect time, I thought, for some first impressions. I'll link to the full spec down below, but this is a small, cordless, sliding table saw, weighing in at about 20 kilos, that's less than a half a sheet of MDF, and that's with a pair of 4 amp batteries fitted. With the table extension folded, it's about 300 by 400 by 500 millimeters in size, and it uses the same 168 mil blade with a 20 mil ball that's on the latest Festool TS60 plunge saw. That gives a maximum depth of cut of about 50 mil at 90 degrees, and of course, full compatibility with the TS60 range of 1.8 millimeter curved blades. There's no saw stop flesh sensing tech in this saw. Festool do seem to be keeping that technology to their static saws, at least here in the UK, and I'm told that the technology does require an earth or ground to function. So perhaps that's another reason they want to keep it cordless. With the table extension in place, the fence will give you a rip cut of 280 millimeters at most, and the sliding table a cross cut of 450 millimeters, a panel saw this is not. There's a mitre gauge in a non-standard mitre slot that locks firmly in place, but is a shockingly sloppy fit otherwise. Clearly, it's not intended to be used loose with the sliding table locked. The sliding table locks in two positions, with the rearmost allowing more infeed support if you're bearing the workpiece against the fence. The sliding table also has a T-slot that takes a standard guard rail clamp. The fence simply slides into a slot on the table and locks at the front. And like the mitre gauge, this is a very loose fit until it's locked, then it stays securely in place. There's no above table dust extraction, instead the blade is well shrouded beneath the table and the 27mm dust port does a good job of capturing most of the dust generated whilst cutting. The saw also comes with a dust bag, but an extractor is recommended. The segmented blade guard can be easily changed for a smaller unguarded riving knife for non-through cuts, either through the access panel beneath the sliding table, or with the blade set to 30mm depth and the allen key inserted through the access hole at the rear to release the catch. Blade height and angle is adjusted by a digital readout, and if you set the blade height to suit the material thickness, the cutting height will be auto-adjusted as you crank the blade over at an angle. The blade tilts towards the fence for bevel cuts, and there's no way to fit the fence to the left-hand side of the blade because of the sliding table. The saw is capable of a minus 10 degree cut though, which could be useful for ripping infills with an undercut, for example ready for scribing. And it's that that gives you a real clue as to Festool's expected use of this saw. It's done a fantastic job of cutting these small fiddly little pieces of mine, these narrow rips and fussy little rectangles, but this is a trimming saw for installers, for fitted furniture, kitchens, 
built-ins and custom cabinetry. That's the kind of work where I think this will see most action. It's not a carpenter's cordless side saw. It's not for ripping full sheets of OSB or shuttering ply in half. And if you're comparing it to the DeWalt or the Hikoki, the Milwaukee or any other of those cordless side saws, then you're comparing apples to oranges. This is for smaller finished work in sprayed panels and veneers, laminates and composites, most likely not on construction sites, but in occupied homes where low noise, portability and good dust collection are important. And honestly, that makes some of Festor's design decisions all the more baffling. Now, as I said at the start, I've only had the saw commissioned and working for a week or so. And before it arrived, I had some very mixed feedback from owners who got in on the first batch. Some folks said their saw was perfect right out of the box with no fettling or calibration needed. Others said that they had all kinds of quite major issues from random electronic freezes and restarts to things like the sliding table being a couple of millimeters out of whack and needing to be returned to Festor for realignment. Mine didn't have any issues as extreme as that, but the mitre gauge was well out of square on the 90 degree indent and the blade angle did need calibrating to zero degrees. This was surprisingly fiddly to do just using a square and I ended up resorting to the old trick of cutting a piece of board in half and then flipping one piece over and checking them against each other until I had them well matched. There is manual adjustment on just about everything if you want to roll up your sleeves and fiddle or given the price of the saw and the appliance like nature of it you might just want to check it back to your festal dealer if you feel it falls short. So only a week or so of it being commissioned but already there are some things that really stand out, some that I'm pretty ambivalent about and some that are real head scratchers. Let me talk you through some of those. Standout features for me are simply size and weight and noise or the lack of it. I have a small workspace surrounded on all sides by offices and other businesses and it is so nice to have a small quiet saw that's easy to move around if needed. There's a mobile base available for it but I'll be making a cabinet for it to sit on uh, in one particular part of the workshop so keep your eyes peeled for that future workshop project. In terms of noise it registers at around 80 dB or so, not much more than the extractor it's attached to but it does feel quieter than that if that makes any sense. Maybe it's to do with the pitch of the brushless motor, but I was genuinely surprised at how high the meter readings were. There's a lot being made of the digital display and the tenths of a millimeter height and angle adjustment, but honestly it leaves me a little bit underwhelmed. The digital angle readout is nice to have and it saves me using the 20 pound angle finder that I already own, but digital height adjustment just feels a little bit gimmicky to me. I just want the blade to come through the material by a couple of mil. I really don't care if that's 1.8 or 2.1. And while the combination of blade height and angle working together for a bevel cut seems like a really cute feature. When you think about it, it's also pretty obvious given all the electronics inside. And actually, if it didn't do that, you'd be scratching your head trying to figure out why not. On a purely personal note, I find that this segmented blade guard that comes supplied with the saw a bit irritating. I'm told this is an EU directive as the segments help prevent the waste coming back towards the user. But I find it just gets in the way and can't easily be moved. It makes it harder to reference off the blade and even though the blade kerf is marked in the bed of the saw, it's not particularly clear, certainly not on mine, and I'm just more comfortable working directly off the teeth on the blade itself. Overall though, I do like the toolless riving knife change and the fact that there's only two screws that hold down the blade insert, though the saw cuts extremely cleanly and I really don't see myself needing to change that out for a zero clearance insert anytime soon. Might have thought next, and if, like me, you were rejoicing that Festival were finally moving away from proprietary extrusion to a standard mitre slot, well, hold on to your hallelujahs because at 21.18 millimeters, this mitre slot is anything but standard unless you're using some kind of alien unit of measurement. Disappointing too that the mitre gauge can't simply be slid in the slot, it's far too loose for that. A combination of sliding table and sliding mitre gauge would give you a far greater cross-cut capacity. And while you could make a sled, you need to remember that you only have 50mm of cutting height to play with. And finally, 
There's the elephant in the room, the fact that this saw is cordless only. It does require a minimum of four amp hour batteries and it does require two of them. It's essentially a 36 volt saw. I knew it was cordless going into the purchase and I had absolutely no problem with that. But why oh why can't there be a simple separate power brick that would trickle charge the batteries if fitted or power the saw if not? It is such an obvious thing to want that I just don't understand why Festool have made this a battery only tool. Yes, all tools for job sites are going cordless and that's a perfectly sensible thing given the flakiness of power supplies on construction sites. But like I said earlier, this is a saw pitched at fitters and installers, guys working more in occupied homes where there is usually access to power. Why not at least give the folks who do have access to it the option to use it. And this is a theme that's come up a lot in comments on YouTube shorts and Instagram reels that I've done on this saw before now. Despite the expense, potential buyers can come to terms with the cost of the saw, and despite the size, they can come to terms with the capacity of the saw, but investing in a whole other battery platform just for a single tool is a step too far for many people, and it is absolutely costing Festool sales. I am on the Festool battery platform and I would love a pair of Bluetooth batteries for this saw, but an extra £300 for the set, I'm just going to make do with the batteries I have, at least for now. So those are the first impressions of the saw, aside from a couple of forehead slapping moments. It's really good and does exactly what I want of it. It does feel a little bit schizophrenic, like it was designed by two totally separate teams of engineers. The ones in charge of the whiz-bang electronics get the attention and the budget, while the B team covering everything else gets whatever scraps are left over. And I think that manifests itself in frankly the poor fit of the fence and mitre gauge. As I said, both lock down well and they perform perfectly, but it's not really the fit and finish that you expect on a saw of this price or quality. If the doors on your BMW or Mercedes fitted this badly, you'd return it to the dealer whether they locked or not. There'll be loads more to come on this as I start using it more in earnest, and I'm sure there'll be a few projects around it as well as I get it settled into the workshop. If you'd like the inside story on those and many other projects, then consider joining us as a 10 Minute Workshop Plus member. More details at 10minuteworkshop.com or sign up directly at 10minuteworkshop.plus. I hope you find the video helpful. If you're considering the saw, then let me know if the battery only aspect bothers you. And if you own the saw, I'd be really interested to hear how you use it. But I'll call this one done for now. Thanks so much for taking a look. I'll see you again very soon. All right, take care.